Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today we have the, well, a knowledge video how the maturation of whiskey takes place. Yeah, how does whiskey mature? There are a lot of influences uh, to a whiskey in the cask and uh, there are internal influences and external ones. Um, whiskey is a, a colorless liquid when it comes directly from the pot stills. And uh, I took a video of the King's Barnes new make. There you can see it's completely colorless. And over the time, during the maturation in the cask, you see here on the painting, uh, some are that light and the others are that dark. There are influences from the type of cask, if there is a sherry cask or not in the whiskey, then the sherry will bring its color uh, from the grapes into uh, the whiskey and uh, the influence from the cask itself. This is not a raw wood. This is a, a thermally treated wood. You're heating, it's called toasting the casks from the inside for tens of minutes. And during this period, uh, the temperature rises to uh, 150 degrees centigrade. This is 250, 280 Fahrenheit, I have no idea. Um, so quite, quite hot. And then the uh, celluloses from the cask walls uh, cracks into shorter pieces sugars and those sugars are then caramelized uh, well to caramel and this brings the color into the whiskey so you have color from uh, the liquid which was before in the cask like sherry or bourbon and the second is the color from inside the cask from uh, the heat treatment the cask has received um, this is one uh, side, the cask. The other side is the production of the whiskey itself. And um, you probably know how the distillation process works. You have a pot of beer filled with beer without hops in it. And this strong beer is heated from below. And then with the rising temperature, the alcohol evaporates first and takes some water with it. And in the end, after the distillation, you receive uh, from a beer from 7 to 8 percent ABV, you reach, well, 65 to 70 ABV after a double distillation. During this distillation, uh, some unwanted aromas are coming over as well. Typically, the four shots, the faints, they are very sharp, intense. And therefore, you have the four shots, you take them away, put them back into the receiver, and with every contact with copper in the pot stills, those feints are con catalytically converted into better tasting compounds. Uh, so the, the magic is going on with the copper. And if you have stills uh, which produce a lot of reflux, that means the alcoholic vapors evaporate and at the neck of the whiskey still they, they are cooling down, condense at the walls and drop down again. And if you have these reflux bowls in the pot stills, then the area there is quite high. It's cooling there and the reflux is strong. Um, then if you have a lot of reflux, you have a lot of contact with the copper, copper and then those uh, sharp aromas are converted into better ones and cutting away the four shots with the unconverted aromas uh, is a good way to have a better whiskey. And the, the vapors going over the top in, in, over the, uh, in the line arm uh, down to the condenser and if the condenser is a copper warm a spiral in a water tank, then you have again a lot of contact with copper and the result is even smoother than uh, a typical industrial 
condenser. Um, this catalytic change, this is the magic uh, during the production. And you do not uh, throw the feints away at all. All feints in the foreshot are going back into the receiver, are mixed with the net next charge and going into the postil again. So there's no waste at the feints. They are all going through this catalytic conversion. And one of the most important factors during the distillation is the distillation rate. How many liters are com coming off the stills per minute? This is a measure for the contact with the copper. And if you have a triple distillation, then you're going through a triple copper contact um, and uh, the distillation goes to higher ABVs um, where you are able to reduce the feints even a little bit more. So these are the main influences for uh, the, it's called the distillery character. And I'll show you a, a picture very soon um, where you can see the influences of the differences, uh, different, well, maturation and taste influences. Yeah. <clears throat> um, if you have unwanted aroma still in a whiskey, in a raw whiskey, then you just have to wait some time and then there will be chemical, there will be chemical reactions going on uh, to put it into a stainless steel tank. And then chemical reactions will work inside the raw whiskey, which results in a smoother whiskey. I had the chance to taste a Macallan in 2003, which came from a re, 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 re filled cask, I think five times, or was it even seven times? And there you could, could see how the, the aroma was with this substractive maturation, it's called. Uh, the bad influences uh, are going away by, uh, well, the intense maturation of the whiskey. Um, you can say, well, these compounds are not fully oxidized and with the time uh, these still active uh, compounds are working on, in, on each other and uh, bring these sharp influences down to a more comfort level. <clears throat> There's a uh, website, a page on whiskey.com where we talk you through this process in much detail. Uh, maturation of casks. Um, now you, I put the, the picture in, so uh, <laughs> bye, <laughs> look, have a look at the t picture. You see a vertical axis, it's the tastes in good to bad um, and on the horizontal axis you have the maturation time moving forward and on the very left um, you see the starting point where you have the raw whiskey with a taste in the middle not good not bad and uh, then you see the red curve falling down quite fast and this is the, well, the oxidization or the change of the uh, faints, the residual faints, the sharp aromas in the whiskey, uh, until you're not able, no longer able to uh, find them in the whiskey. And this is when I always say, well, there's no, no left maturity, uh, youthness in this whiskey, no metallic note. Uh, then it shows that this immaturity line uh, was followed long enough that there is no uh, well, bad influence from the youthness of the whiskey. And there are some distilleries which have a lot of this copper in use, uh, where this immaturity is going away or started even very low. So it's away after only very few years. And there are some which are distilling three times where all those immaturities also are not that uh, 
tasteable and those with a lot of copper in the production process with a warm tub, uh, there the immaturity goes away also very, very fast. Then you see the blue line, uh, the thick blue line, uh, blue line and the dashed blue line. Uh, and the dashed blue line uh, falls a little bit. That, that means that the distillery character uh, changes over the years a little bit because, uh, for instance, if you have a, a peat content, a smoky uh, whiskey, then the oxidization of the smoke compounds, the phenols, uh, is moving forward and the smoke is getting less. So the distillery character isn't, isn't constant, is, is losing a little bit over the, the time. And then you see the green lines uh, which st shows the influence of the cask, uh, that the cask maturation adds, adds uh, compounds to the whiskey, good tasting compounds to the whiskey, and this takes quite a time until uh, the taste builds up of the cask. And on the very right, where the blue dashed line and the green line meets, this is the perfect time for filling this whiskey into the bottle. It has reached the peak of its maturation. And this is, we always look for that point. If the cask is too strong, like uh, the black one I showed here in the beginning, then the, uh, it moves quite up very fast and then you have these bitter oaky influences and if the cask is too too weak as with the <laughs> seven refill Macallan uh, then uh, the line is too low um, and the well now we take the picture away thank you and uh, we have to to tell or to, to find out uh, how to well to interpret all those results with the current uh, trends in the industry and that means that uh, the movement to no age statement whiskies NAS where I have taken a video also uh, is done by a very good distillation that this red line is falling very fast and adding very active casks that the cask maturation line heads up extremely fast so that after a few years uh, you reach the optimum point between distillery character and cask maturation and the immaturity is already gone. So if I'm looking at NAS whiskies, I always look does they have had enough time to lose this metallic youthness. <clears throat> there is also some, well, the, the, this, the first one, the red curve, is the subtractive maturation. The green line is the additive uh, maturation. And there, there is also an, an interactive maturation. That means uh, when those compounds are working with each other. For example, uh, the heat treatment of a cask, as I said, it's toasted and then afterwards it's burned out for tens of seconds, not tens of minutes, tens of seconds with a high flame that there, and then you, you uh, extinguish it with water. So you receive a charcoal layer on the inside and this charcoal layer interacts with the faints because it's an, uh, an active filter Charcoal has a very high inside surface and, and can uh, take a lot of uh, sharp influences uh, from away from the whiskey. Uh, there's this interactive maturation between the cask and the immaturity. And there is a, uh, well, a transition zone between the charcoal and the cask, which adds, well, smoky, some smoky character to the whiskey, which might be identified as a distillery character in the end. So everything is mixing up. Uh, you can see the big influences, but a lot of small influences going on as well. And this brings complexity into everything.
Yeah. On the other side, have a look at vodka. What are they doing? They are distilling as high as they can, so there's nothing left uh, from the distillery character. Then they filter it to get it clean. Again, nothing left from the distillery character. And then uh, they're not maturing it, so there's no transfer uh, from the cask. And in the end, vodka is just used for, oh, I'm sorry about that, for drinking purposes on one hand, on the other side, flavored. So they put additional flavors in. And uh, so it's not all about the distillation, but all about flavoring. And this is not what we are looking inside whiskey. We're looking at what the distillery brings with this copper magic and the cast bring with this cast magic. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come and feel free to add your questions in our forum and in our vlog on whiskey.com.